This is what we're making today. Squirrel fish. This is a white bass. We're gonna start off by taking off its head. I chose a white bass because it was the cheapest fish in the market. But honestly, you could use any white round fish for this dish. Once the head is off, we're gonna fillet this fish off its backbone. A very important note here is that you stop cutting right before you cut the whole fillet off. Right when you hit the tailbone right there, you stop. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And again, stop right when you hit the tailbone, and your fish should look like this. We're gonna fold our fish with the fillet on one side, and we're gonna cut that backbone right off. The tailbone should be holding the two fillets together. Next, we're gonna take the belly off the fillets. Once the belly's off, we're now gonna make our cross cuts. Using the heel of your knife to cut, we're gonna cut from tail to head. It's very important to not puncture the skin, so don't put too much downward pressure on the knife. Just let the knife do the work. Next, we're gonna make our cross cuts. We're gonna tilt our knife 45 degrees, making an incision one centimeter apart from each cut. Again, it's very important that you don't puncture the skin because it might break during the frying process, so be very careful. We're gonna do the same thing for the other fillet. Again, watch it how the front of the knife guides the direction, but the heel of the knife is doing all the cutting. After each cut, tilt the knife back to a right angle. This will help separate the flesh from each other. This is also a good way to check that you made an incision all the way through without penetrating the skin. After making our cuts, we're going to give the fish a quick rinse. This will wash the slime off and help separate the flesh from each other. This will also help get rid of the extremely fishy taste. Next, in a bowl, we're going to add in one egg yolk and salt. We're going to give this a quick mix with our fingers and then add in our fish. This will be used as the binding agent for the starch. Make sure during this step that you get every little bit of this fish. And of course, don't forget the head. Once we're done with this step, we're now going to throw it in with our corn starch. Make sure you get every little crook and cranny of this fish so it deep fries really well. And of course, don't forget the head. Once we're done, we're ready to deep fry. When deep frying, don't throw the fish right into the deep fryer. You gotta do this step first. By cradling the bottom part of the fish before throwing it all in, we'll stabilize its shape. We're gonna do this for about 30 seconds and then drop one end of the fish. Make sure you keep holding onto the tail because it's a good handle while we swirl this fish around. We're gonna deep fry this for another minute. After a minute, we're gonna flip the fish over to ensure even frying, and then we can finally drop the whole fish in. We're gonna deep fry it for another two minutes. This fish was deep fried for a total of four minutes. After deep frying, we're going to temporarily set it aside while we make our sweet and sour sauce. In a saucepan with a little bit of oil, we're going to add in 80 grams of ketchup, 
40 grams of sugar, 40 grams of rice wine vinegar, and 20 grams of Shaoxin wine. We're gonna give this a mix, bring it to a simmer, and we're done. This is our one minute sweet and sour sauce. Now let's get ready to plate. All right, it's time to eat this. What I like about the presentation of this dish is that you could just put this in the middle of the table and people could just pick off the flesh right off of its skin. But in terms of taste, I mean, it's deep fried fish with sweet and sour sauce. You could have accomplished this without doing all that fancy cutting. But honestly though, this is the first time I've ever made this dish and it's nice to have learned some new techniques. If I ever want to impress people with some deep fried fish, I may use this technique somewhere in the future. Anyways, if you guys like what you see, hit the like button. And if you guys have any suggestions on what I should cook next, please post in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe.